Pendragon is King Arthur's surname, but it's also the name of this game, which is deep in the lore of the legends of King Arthur. So while I'm a fan of King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table, the question remains, is this game fun? Is it worth buying? Is it worth playing? So I'm here to answer in this 5 minute review. To put it simply, this game is like chess. In other words, all characters have only one health in the battlefield and can be disabled by essentially one hit. You get to choose your difficulty level and then choose your character and then off you go starting with that character on your quest to save King Arthur and assist him in his final battle. Now, um, the list of characters to choose from are all very play important role in Arthurian lore. So there's his enemy Morgana and there his wife Guinevere and his disloyal knight um, Lancelot. So there's even the wizard Merlin who plays a bit differently from the other characters. Your goal is to join King Arthur against his final battle against his son Modred. However, you have no idea where this mythical place called Camden is, so you have to travel around England to find clues to find out where the battle is. Now, you only start with one character, but along the way you can recruit allies to assist you, like I have. I recruited in this gameplay, I recruited one lady, Ada, for her to help me in the final battle. Every character has a special ability, like in this case, um, the character I'm using, who is um, Lady Rhiannon. Rhiannon can charge through obstacles, but I must be very careful when moving because positioning is very important in this game. As I said earlier, everyone in this game on the battlefield only has one health, so a, hit, a lucky hit by the enemy can easily disable your character. For instance, I spend one of my action points to pacify a wolf in the distance, but this exposes my character, Morgan Le Fay, to a adjacent wolf attack, and that knocks her out of the fight for this battle. The good news is that the enemy also only have one health, so they can be easily taken out of the fight. Now, the way to win the map, you have two ways. Other than the final battle, you can clear the map either by killing all the enemies on the field or by reaching the enemy's base square at the end of the map. There is some level of decision making in the story. So for instance, depending on dialogue options that you make, certain characters may choose to join your party, certain characters may refuse to join your party, and certain characters may leave your party. Another key decision is whether to incorporate certain skills into your moveset as your character becomes more experienced. You may choose to be more comfortable with the original skill set of the character, but as it progresses, your character will be exposed to even more skills to carry on the fight against Moderate. Now on to the graphics and art of the game. Personally, I like it. It's reminiscent of medieval paintings and art of the era. In addition, I'm also a sucker for um, medieval base um, art style, so I'm a bit biased towards the game decisions to make their characters look like um, 2D paintings. So um, I do like it, so I have not much to complain about in the terms of art style and I have a lot of good things to say about it. Um, while there's limited animation inside, it's not a type of game that requires complex animations to achieve its purpose and I think this game achieved its purpose here in revealing what it was like in King Arthur's Court. Now on to the story, which is the easily the best part of the game. The team obviously did their research well, as they cover a lot of obscure characters like Brenderwood and Lady Riona, who I'm using now right here. And in addition, you get extra stories through the campfires, where individual characters do share stories which were popular during medieval times. So my personal favourite is the Fairy King, in which um, a wise queen has to trick a fairy queen into not taking her daughter away from her. While we see fairies as 
forces of good, maybe through the popularizations of Disney's Peter Pan. Um, in medieval times, fairies were often seen as tricksters and forces of chaos and evil. Thus, the stories told at that time was appropriate how the medieval listeners and audiences would appreciate them at that time. So again, I commend the team making this game to be as historically accurate as possible. In conclusion, I rate this game a 9 out of 10. It is a fun tactical game and it may be a bit too intense for people so I would like to see more difficulty options and more ways to tweak the setting. But other than that, this game is a fun ride, especially if you love King Arthur. So thank you for listening to 5 minute review. I know this is over 5 minutes, but have fun and I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Peace out.